Okay, let's see what we have here. We've got patient's name, uh, MSI RTX 3090 Ventus 3X. Age is two months. Complication is increasing temperatures in the GDDR6X memory modules. All right, Mr. 3090, let's see what we've got here. Let's take a look at the problem. Hmm, yes. Everything seems okay. Uh, let's take a look at the GPU core temperature. Okay, 51 degrees. Seems like the fans are working properly. The core clocks look pretty good here. Let's take a temperature on the back side. Oh yeah, I see what the problem is here. 88 degrees, 90 degrees, 92 degrees, 94, now 96 degrees. And that's much higher than last week. Look, I have some pretty bad news for you, Mr. 3090. Looks like we're gonna have to proceed with a simple procedure to remove the old thermal pads and replace them with new ones. But don't worry, it's a relatively simple procedure and uh, this should be over pretty quickly and you wouldn't have anything to worry about. Is the operation dangerous? What are the chances of a GPU failure? There's very little chance of that happening. The heatsink is held together by some screws and the thermal paste, and it's very easy to open up and put back together. There really isn't a major concern. All right, let's do the procedure. Hey, what's going on everyone? So I've had the RTX 3090 for a couple of months now. I've done quite a few videos on the VRAM temperatures on both gaming and mining, and you can check those videos out on my channel. Now, uh, over the past couple of months, I've noticed that the memory temperatures have been slowly increasing on this. So when I first started um, in mining, I would get about 82 degrees. And now with using the same settings, it's about 86 degrees. So I figured it's probably time for me to change out the thermal pads and uh, see what that does. Now, I've actually gone ahead to uh, change out the thermal pads, so I already know what the result is. But uh, basically, this video, will there will be a how-to guide or some tips at the start uh, with some time-lapse video. And then after that, I will um, look at the results. But uh, if you want, you can just jump straight ahead to the results. But uh, just quickly, the result that I got was about 8 to 10 degrees difference on the 3090 after changing out the thermal pad. So I was really happy with that result. Okay, here are some tips. First tip is obviously using software to monitor the memory junction temperatures. For example, I use HW Info 64, though you can also use GPU-Z from Tech Power Up. I suggest only really changing the pads out if you think you have an issue with memory temps. If your memory junction temperatures are say in the 60 degrees range, I think that's perfectly fine. If you do open up your card, you may have more difficulty with your warranty later on, depending which country you purchase from. So I think it's probably worth it to change out the thermal pads if you're above 80 degrees or more. Tip number two, what thermal pads to buy and how much do they cost? So there are a range of thermal pads out there, including Thermalrite, Grizzly Thermal Pads, and GLID. I have only used Thermalrite and I do recommend them. Make sure to get the highest thermal conductivity that you can get. The pads I got were about 13 watts per meter kelvin. If you don't get high enough thermal conductivity, you won't see enough of a temperature difference. Thermal pads were roughly about $10 each and you'll need two packs of Thermalrite. Other brands may differ with size. Tip number three, thickness of the thermal pads. The other thing when shopping for thermal pads is you need to buy the right thickness of thermal pads. So make sure to find a video of someone opening up their GPU and seeing what the thickness of the pads are. Or you can try to estimate it yourself by just looking through between the backplate and the PCB. I bought both 2mm and 3mm, which meant I had to double up on costs. If you want to replace thermal pads on all the other components like the capacitors and MOSFETs, you're going to want to make sure about the thickness on those as well because they can be different than the memory modules. Tip number four, other items you'll need are isopropyl alcohol around 70% to wipe off old thermal paste, a new tube of thermal paste with the highest thermal conductivity you can get. For this, I recommend Arctic MX4, which will give you a decent performance, similar or better than stock performance. You probably want a cutting board, pen knife, screwdriver, and tweezers can also come in handy. 
Tip number five, before you open up your GPU, make sure to do a quick test, whether it be in the game or mining, and get some temperature readings on HW Info 64, as well as the MSI Afterburner settings you're using. This way you can get a before and after test results and see if you've done everything correctly. This is extremely important and is my number one tip, and I'll tell you why in the results section. Tip number six, the MSI Aventus 3X was super easy to open up. Just unscrew all the screws on the back plate, unscrew the four-way mounts on the back side, put the mounts and those screws to one side. Be careful when you remove the fan headers and don't pull the wires. Once you can see all the screws are off on the back side, the only thing holding it together should be the thermal paste or the heatsink. So just gently try to pry it open. Don't put too much pressure in case there's a screw you haven't undone. Tip number seven, on the Ventus 3X, there's also a few other screws on the back plate holding that and the PCB together, so undo that. I recommend changing the thermal pads on the back side of the PCB first, then you can put that back together and set it to one side. You can check thermal pad thickness with a pair of calipers or just do it by eye. At first, I thought I needed 2.5 millimeter thick pads, but it was actually closer to two mils rather than three mils, so I used two. If you're caught in the situation where the pads are exactly 2.5 millimeters, and I don't want to give bad advice here, but you can try with two millimeters first. If you go with three millimeters, it may not compress enough, and then your heatsink may not make good contact with the GPU die. Similarly, if you go with two millimeters, just be careful when screwing down the GPU that you don't overdo it just in case. Obviously, the best solution would be to get 2.5 millimeter pads if they're available, but sometimes they're just not. Tip number eight, use the isopropyl alcohol to remove all of the thermal paste off the heatsink and the GPU die. Don't use a tissue like I did. It's possible that some of it catches and remains. Use a microfiber cloth. In terms of amounts of thermal paste, I actually ended up reapplying the thermal paste three times and testing that. The first time I put a big ball of paste, the second time a lot less, but I spread it out, and the third time even less and spread it. I found the third time was about one degree less than the other two methods, so I recommend a thin layer spread out, and that's because you just want to fill the micro gaps. You don't want a big layer over the top of the die. You want metal on GPU contact. Tip number nine, easiest way to put the GPU back together is to position it back using the screw holes. Just make sure the thermal pads don't actually fall off as you do this. Tip number 10, don't overdo the screws on the mounts. They should be tight, but there shouldn't be any more turns after that. I've heard people say it's possible to crack the GPU from tightening too much. Okay, so before I get to the results, I've got a quick story to share with you guys. I mentioned that I reapplied the thermal paste three times, and that was because after the first test, um, I noticed that I got a much higher GPU core temperature than before I did the thermal pad replacement. So before I got about 51 degrees, and then afterwards, I got about 56 degrees, so five uh, degrees Celsius uh, more. So I was wondering what was going on because like I felt like I did something wrong. So I reapplied it again, this time with a little bit less thermal paste and then spread it out again. And then there was no improvement. And then I did it again a third time and I put a lot less and spread it out even thinner. Um, so I did manage to get one degree less. So after that, I just uh, resigned to myself that, okay, well, I don't think I can fix this. Maybe I just screwed something up. And I think this would have turned out to be a very different video if I had left it there. But um, as I was tidying up, I realized the aircon wasn't actually on. So um, normally the with the aircon on, it's about 25 degree ambient. So without the aircon, it's probably like about 28, 29, maybe even 30 degrees. So that's probably why there was a five degree temperature difference. Uh, but once I turned the aircon on, the GPU core um, was actually um, uh, much better. It was uh, lower than the 51 degrees and I ended up getting about uh, two degrees less. So uh, that worked out uh, very well. All right, let's take a look at the before and after results. So in terms of nice hash mining, at default settings, the memory junction temperature was 96 degrees, but with the new thermal pads, the result was 88 degrees. With optimized undervolt settings, and you can check my video on my channel for that, the temperature decreased from 88 degrees to 80 degrees. Now you guys know about the video I did this week where I added a fan and heatsink on top of the backplate. 
make sure to check that video out if you haven't but that removed about four degrees with that mod now with the new thermal pads heatsink and fan the default settings go from 92 degrees to 80 degrees with the optimized settings the temperatures go from 84 degrees to 74 degrees in Skyrim, the new temperatures are 74 degrees and 68 if you use a fan and heatsink on the back. In Red Dead Redemption 2, there is a similar result, 72 degrees on its own, 68 degrees if you use a fan and heatsink on the back. So I think that's the memory junction temperature issue resolved for the 3090 and also the 3080. And as you can see from my previous videos on this topic, the uh, memory temperatures can get quite hot in the 80s and 90s and even up to 100 in mining. So it definitely pays to change out those stock thermal pads because with these aftermarket thermal pads, uh, they have much higher thermal conductivity. So it's more than likely going to be better than the stock ones inside here. So I got minus 10 degrees for my uh, thermal pad replacement. So um, that's my recommendation for you guys to uh, change out the thermal pads. Okay, so if you like this video, make sure to click the like button. Also subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and I'll see you guys in the next one.